Hi. I'm glad that you said that you were a Marine Corps veteran because I wanted to bring this point up. How many times a year do you have to go as a Marine to re-qualify and prove that you are competent and proficient in the weapons that you have been issued? I'll answer that for you as a former rifle pistol coach in the Marine Corps. You have to go annually. And how long does that take? Two weeks, right? You have a week of grass week and then a week of live fire. Isn't that right? So in the Marine Corps, you have to go for two weeks out of your life and prove to the Marine Corps that you are still proficient in the weapons that have been issued to you. Now let's take it a step further. Let's say you're a private through a sergeant that's living in the barracks in the Marine Corps. Are you allowed to store a firearm in your barracks room? The answer is no, you are not. If you privately own a weapon, you have to go and register that weapon with the provost marshal's office, and then they issue a receipt to you saying where your weapon will be stored and kept safe for you. Why is it that the United States Marine Corps, the finest fighting force on the planet, is more restrictive in who and where firearms can be stored and possessed than the average 18 year old in the state of Texas. So this clip recently surfaced on Reddit of, of a former Marine rifle and pistol coach um, who basically goes on a rant about why the status quo right now as it pertains to guns is completely untenable and flies in the face of all the lip service we hear about wanting to keep citizens and people safe. Uh, I love this video because a couple of things. One, this guy is a Marine, right? Or he's a veteran. And these are the people who we pretend, especially the powers that be, um, they pretend to hold these people in such high reverence and, you know, esteem, right? Like, Veterans are like unassailable people in our society. And, you know, oftentimes they're used in very cynical ways. See the Kaepernick situation where it's like, oh, this guy kneeled during the national anthem. What about the veterans? He disrespected the veterans. So I love that it's a person from a venerated class and group of people that's speaking to the issue. That's the first thing. Let's look at the Second Amendment for a second. All right. The Second Amendment says a well-regulated militia. If you believe that the Second Amendment applies to all citizens and all citizens are supposed to be that militia, what do you think well-regulated means? It doesn't mean no regulations. Jesus Christ, why is this so hard to understand? Doing nothing makes it easier for children to get slaughtered in their schools. Another thing that I like is that this dude is very clear about what a solution could possibly look like. Um, and he does a great job illustrating the importance of it, right? And the, again, the Marines are instructive because these guys perform a function. And as this gentleman points out, every single year for two weeks, you have to go prove that you are proficient at using your weapon. Like these are Marines. And again, it makes sense because these guys perform a job that involves using these weapons. And so it's of the utmost importance of the Marines have shown you um, the powers that be over there. They are like, this is an important job function. And so you need to prove to us for two weeks every year that you know what you're doing with these very deadly weapons because they have the ultimate consequences when people misuse them and like we don't want that like it's obvious and to me what this gentleman is pointing out is that in order to make things better these firearms and weapons owners need to be more heavily regulated right um, and, you know, I wouldn't be the first person to bring up this example, but of course you think about the example of cars. Uh, you can hurt people in a car. So in order to obtain a license, you have to sh demonstrate to somebody that you know how to safely move this deadly, potentially deadly vehicle. And this gentleman is just saying, like, if the consequences are life and death, you need to, we need to regulate this thing in such a way that the wrong people aren't using these for nefarious purposes. But, you know, what's not mentioned is in the video is that unlike the Marines, um, you're bumping against the interests of profit, 
Uh, and that's why you don't get regulations. Um, these hugely profitable gun manufacturing companies, they have the weight, they have the might, they have the financial and political power to ensure that they're able to more easily move as many guns as humanly possible. And that's what we're bumping up against as a society. I would like to propose to the entire left that we stop using the term gun control. Nobody likes to be controlled. It's terrible rhetoric. How about instead we use the term gun responsibility? Make politicians come out and say, I don't believe in gun responsibility. They're not gonna say it because you can't say that and sound sane. After the horrible massacres that took place in Buffalo, New York, and just this past week in Ovalde, Texas, where so many innocent lives were taken for absolutely no reason, over Memorial Day weekend, there were 14 mass shootings recorded, meaning four or more people were shot. Uh, and that took nine lives as well as over 60 people being injured. And I think that, you know, it's interesting to see and you look at a lot of the charts that track people's attention and how much social media is talking about these issues. And the reality is, is that when, you know, the talk of the town dips on the issue of gun control, it's not that nobody cares. It's just that this happens so often and so frequently and it's taken place across the majority of our lifetimes. You know, ever since I've been growing up, even before uh, the talk of, you know, mass shootings was as popular as it is now, we grew up around that just in our backyards every day. Um, so the thing is, is that this is such a common occurrence. But now going into the midterms, this is definitely going to be one of the biggest issues, along with uh, abortion rights. I live in a rural place in a purple state, and I know people who feed their families through hunting. As much as leftists like me don't like to admit it, there are millions of conservative gun owners in this country who believe in gun responsibility. They don't want anyone to get hurt. And as I'm sure you all have seen over uh, the past weekend at the NRA conference that Trump spoke at, where he was, you know, talking nonsense, talking about our schools need to be hardened and basically, you know, just making our schools basically like prisons all over the United States, like they are in a lot of inner city areas which wouldn't work. But let that alone, let's not forget that no guns were allowed at the NRA convention. You know, the, the, uh, the organization that invests so much money into politics that keeps our gun control legislation at a complete standstill in the Senate, you know, that being said, there's no guns allowed at the convention. Why? Because they know good and well that guns are dangerous and in the hands of people who are not properly trained or who maybe aren't in their right minds, it can be very, very dangerous. So the issue is well known, even by the people who perpetrate the issue, even by the people who are the most responsible, which are the gun manufacturers in this country. So, you know, again, going into the midterms, this is going to be one of the loudest things that's talked about uh, policy wise. So why are we using rhetoric that is intentionally polarizing? My fellow Americans, we are going to pass effective gun responsibility laws. And if you can't get behind that, we are watching you like a hawk. And with the Senate taking a two week recess, not coming back until June 6th, it's obvious that they're hoping that, you know, the talk dies down by the time they get back and that they won't have to truly press with it. Not because none of them care. Most of them don't care. That's true. But even the ones who do care, they know that, I mean, what are you really going to do? You have too much corruption in the system. You have way too much money from gun manufacturers clogging up the pipes. And what can really happen? So this really circles back around to what we hear at TYT talk about all the time is that the main issue in our political system is that there's way too much legalized bribes, legalized corruption. There's way too much money coming from corporations, specifically through super PACs, that really don't allow for good and responsible legislation to be passed on gun control or pretty much anything else. You know, all the biggest issues that we're facing, the things that this country needs to tackle in order to make ourselves truly what we claim to be, which is number one, there has to be something done about the corruption in the system. So the answer to that is for us to rally behind better candidates, of course, like I always say, and to get more involved in our communities and to fight every single day and to not give up.